So if you're watching this video, hopefully you've watched our first video on Scilab and the introduction to familiarize yourself with that. Now in this video, we want to talk about what I think is pronounced XCOS. Maybe XCOS, I'm just gonna call it XCOS because I am not sure. So XCOS is a way to graphically and more intuitively set up a system so you don't have to do everything mathematically. It just makes your life a little bit simpler. So I'm gonna jump right in. I'm gonna switch to the screen capture again and go grab the other microphone and we will go over how to do this. And we're just gonna do a simple example to show how all of it works together and show how much easier it is than trying to manually enter in everything via text. Okay, so we are in Scilab here. And as you can see, I've cleared everything out and it's nice and empty and clean because this time we are actually not gonna do anything here in the console, not gonna worry about the command history, variable browser, or the files uh, area over here. So we are just going to jump straight into XCOS. And um, it, it's just a, it's a great tool for modeling and uh, simulating systems. And uh, is kind of like MATLAB Simulink, it's something similar. So with that, there's a couple of ways to go into it, but the easiest way is to simply find this button up here and click it. And you will be presented with a visual layout. So over here you have the window, and this is the window wherein you actually set everything up. And then this is what's called the palette browser. And so in the palette browser, we can look through different things and decide what we want to put into our editing window over here. And so this is basically all of the, the pieces that we have. And then this is the place where we put those pieces together. Now, this is going to be a really short video, really short overview. We're not going to get into depth. I just want to show you how to get into it, how to put stuff over and um, basically how to interface with it. And then once we are doing the control systems tutorials, uh, all those tutorials that Kushal is putting together, that's where we'll actually get more into depth on this and more um, practical usage out of this. But when you first open it up, it can be a little bit intimidating. And also strangely, I, whenever I look at it, I'm like, oh, hey, look at this ideal transformer, diode, ground, all these cool things. And then I kind of hit a wall the first time I come into something like this and think, yeah, but what do I do with it? And so with that, we'll worry about the what do I do with it later. Right now, just get used to the fact that, hey, in the electrical, we have these different things that we can put in. And then you have some sinks that we'll want to use this. We'll want to use the C-scope um, quite frequently. We'll actually use that in a sample in just a moment. And then sources and then a bunch of stuff that we're not going to be dealing with, like thermo hydraulics. And, well... If you want to get into digital, you get some of this logic gates, stuff like that. But we're not going to worry about that. At the same time, if you're following along, I recommend pausing the video and just kind of going through and seeing what's in there, what, what you can use. And so we are actually just going to do a quick transfer function. We're basically going to have a uh, step function as an input, a transfer function to do something with it, and then an oscilloscope to look at what comes out afterwards. So because these things are all over the place, and if you know exactly what you're looking for, it's actually sometimes easier just to type in the search, and then as you're up here, it'll pop up and say, okay, step. All right, step function, that's what I need. So you just click and drag right there and drops it there in the corner. And then I'll go up here and just say, okay, I think I can just do transfer. Let's see if that pulls it up. Yeah. Get your transfer function right here. And then we'll need the oscilloscope. Um, and if you remember, it actually isn't called oscilloscope. It's called CS cope. So if you type in oscilloscope, it's not going to find what you want. So CS cope. Just FYI for future reference. And then you pull that in. And then, actually, we need a clock to run the oscilloscope. So let's just go over here and get our clock. So as easy as that, we have created a very basic system. Now, we need to actually connect all of these things together. So let me try and not make this too darn ugly. Oh, too late. I don't know why. Let's do that. And then you can click here and then drag and connect. Click here, drag and connect. And so basically this is saying feed the step function into your transfer function and then feed that transfer function output into the oscilloscope. And then you just need this clock to make the oscilloscope run. And I missed. So there we go. And that's it. Actually, right now, even though we haven't put any parameters in and we haven't 
come up with the transfer function that goes in here, we don't need to worry about that right now. This will, again, we'll go into that sort of stuff later as we are doing the actual work uh, as we're going through the control systems. But up here, we can just go start. And there we go. Now, this is kind of ugly. You can't really see too much. And so that's where I'd go up and do, I think it's a reframe to contents. There we go. That looks better. And so that shows that as you have this step step function, instead of getting a perfect 0 to 1, because you have a transfer function that slows down the response a little bit, you get this nice curved line. Okay, and that's, that's really it. That's uh, the most fundamental foundational aspect of XCOS that you need to understand. And as we get into transfer functions in a couple of tutorials into the control systems tutorials, you can use this to verify that your math is working, or just to get a, an intuitive sense of what's going on. Like, hey, what's the shape of this going to look like without having to crunch all of the numbers? And again, we'll go into those sorts of details, but now you should at least be familiar with XCOS and kind of how it goes together, the, the basic functionality. And if you already watched the Scilab um, tutorial, now you should at least have a grounding in both of these so that if we are talking about these in a tutorial, you can follow along without being like, what in the world is he talking about? So we will come back with more um, control systems tutorials and also more Scilab and XCOS specific tutorials. So depending on where we are, Hopefully we have those out by now and you are able to go and check them out and get more advanced topics. And uh, if you do like this, subscribe so you get notified of when those things come out and give it a like so that YouTube gives us likes and lets other people know that there is this stuff out there. All right. Thank you very much. And I hope you have a great day. Bye.